Okay, hopefully I'm talking clear enough now because um, I was told that my voice can be a bit muddled sometimes. Hopefully it's not like that. Hopefully I'm not talking too fast, which I know I can do. And I'm talking in my normal voice this time instead of my fake voice that I would usually use when I'm trying to be sarcastic. Which hopefully doesn't get on your nerves. But anyway, I decided to start off with a reference drawing of the Brachiosaurus. And it's pretty hard to find a Jurassic Park Brachiosaurus side view. Because as you know, the regular dinosaurs or accurate real life ones, whatever, they're not exactly, you know, anything like the Jurassic Park dinosaurs. So I couldn't just use a regular um, fossil study by Scott Hartman, I think it is. Don't know if it is him. Anyway, it's, I always use his models as references. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, but um, it's what I do because they're really you know, just useful ones. So I had to make my own this time because it's just a pack one. So I just took the regular reference image to it. When I went through the regular process, there is a there is a good video telling you how to do this. You can probably copy it from here though. Place this is mostly this is it's not even though it's a time lapse, it's not something fast enough to be a regular time lapse. And so you copy here, just created a plane, a simple plane, went into side view by going three five, then click R Y ninety so that you get the plane facing you. Then you just go into edit mode and you extrude it by selecting two sides and E. You just extruded it there. And then what you do is, um, I'm a bit behind on this now, aren't I? Oh well. And then um, after that, you've got the entire thing set up. You just go into side view one, you move it a bit, and then you go control A in order to get the centre right again, and then you mirror it, and then you get the thickness. And then what you do is you just select each vertices, move it down, move it up, try and push the model in. Just keep moving it smaller. I would advise not pressing just regular G, you know, you've got like GX, GY, GZ. So that means you're getting it perfectly and it's not you don't get random spikes popping up and stuff like that so that's what i'm doing now i'm just going through the model as, as you can see it was very fat in the neck especially the neck looked really fat at some areas and so i was just going through it editing the neck smoothing it down making it a bit thinner making it a bit rounder and you know not as bulbously large and thick as it was before which you know kind of makes sense brachiosaurus is a pretty pretty thick dinosaur it's pretty wide Dinosaur, although not the biggest, it's pretty close. In, you know. Anyway, so I just started doing this. I didn't actually do the crest for the brachiosaurus yet. Crest head thing. I'm not sure what you call it, because it's not quite a crest. It's kind of like a bump more, it's more like a bump or a hump on its head. And so I decided that I wouldn't. I wasn't going to do that quite yet. I was going to do it at the end because it just cool cause issues. And then I decided to do the feet. And when you do the, do the um the feet or the legs. You need to make sure you're not in side view when doing this entirely. You need to select the plane first because if you're in side view and select the plane, as you'll see here, it will either select all the planes, which is what I did in this, in this second leg, or it will just select the back one and will cause problems and have to redo the entire leg. But then go into side view view and then press C and select all the versus, otherwise you'll only select the one closest to you rather than the one behind you. And that obviously is going to cause problems because it's not going to be a straight leg and it's, you know, one side is going to be going downwards, whereas the other side is just flat side. If you can see what I mean, if I think you do. Which is a shame, but then yeah, I just decided to colour it after this because it's easier to see in darker colours than it is to see when you're in brighter colours such as white. And also, you may have noticed a while back I moved into Cycles Render, which is a. But my, I think in general, Cycles is a much more preferred method of rendering it's what I always render in I, you can use blender because blender, blender render takes a lot less time but cycles just overall the work looks better and seeing as I emphasize in that kind of cartoony low poly style I um, decided to move in cycles primarily all the time but it takes a lot lot longer to render which is obviously a problem and then, yeah, as you can see here, I started doing the crest afterwards, so I just clipped two faces and extruded them outwards in order to make sure I was getting the right proportions for it. I meddled around with this quite a few times because a few times it just ended up looking like a horn on the head, especially here, it just looked like this horn or crest on its head, which didn't quite look right. But eventually, I settled on the simple bump design. Uh, it looks a bit like a crest, but seeing as I'm going to 
print this probably it's not exactly the end of the world if it's it's going to be very small when I actually print it it's going to be just a bump a simple small bump in the compared to the rest of the Brachiosaurus and this is going to be quite a simple design so now I just went around doing um, stringing the legs out to make them thicker and wider um, what you can do is you could make little bumps on the feet by loop cutting the to the um, bottom feet but I decided against doing that because it would just take too much time and then you wouldn't really see it on the final model and then I decided to cut the rigging but all I did was I set up an armature and rigged it but this is an incredibly long process and I decided the video was already long enough as you see here I am going through watching the old Jurassic Park video please don't see my videos universal it's a very short clip in the middle of my video so if you sue me for that single clip then um, I don't know what to say. Anyway, yeah. after I did that, I then moved into a new scene because I didn't want to have damage the original Pachyos and I just set up the simple plane so that I could see everything and then I got a few more reference images so that I could see. But yeah, I set up this cube at the bottom, but that was so that I could make sure that the entire thing was level because otherwise, you know, one leg could be massively lower than the other one. And then smoke was one of the hardest things to figure out with this. And um, what I decided to do was this is a trick that I saw a lot of people doing was just Seeing as this was a very simplistic low poly scene, I figured the best thing to do would be to just create a load of spheres on the place and then bond them about everywhere and all that stuff. And so I started doing this. However, soon this video file gets corrupted, so 